Hey chocolate friends, today I'm going to talk about a chocolate maker that you may recognize from somewhere else. And the chocolate company name is Stash Chocolate. Here's a couple of his bars. And you may recognize the founder, Eric Kepler, who runs Stash out of Hillsboro, Oregon in the US from another TV show. He was the season three winner of Best Bakers in America on the Food Network. And he was also on Snoop and Martha's Very Tasty Halloween, which I love that pairing, Snoop and Martha. Anyway, um, Eric started Stash Chocolate. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put a picture over here so you can see what Eric looks like to know if you might recognize him. So he started Stash Chocolate in 2019 which is the same year as the season three food network show and eric is one of my he he's one of the kind of chocolate maker that i really appreciate that comes to chocolate because he has a background in as a pastry chef and that means that he's developed all these flavor techniques working with sugar and chocolate previously coming to being a chocolate maker. So Eric grew up in Pennsylvania, home to Hershey's chocolate. That's the kind of thing he grew up with. But his cooking inspiration and a lot of his baking from scratch inspiration came from his Nana. He grew up cooking and baking with his Nana. She had a big influence on him. And I'll tell you a few ways in a minute. So he went to school to be a pastry chef and in Rhode Island, and since 2003, he's been a pastry chef, executive pastry chef, all around California. Um, before that, I should mention this because it's probably important to how he develops flavors for you to know. He was trained in Austria with a pastry chef that influenced him to have a style that puts flavor forward versus being sugar forward which I think is amazing because <laughs> that's unusual in pastry chefs. So he worked as a pastry chef, executive pastry chef all around California for like 25 years. His last um, spot was being an executive pastry chef at the Four Seasons. And on, his four, on the Four Seasons menu, he had his grandma's signature fudge cake with layers of rich chocolate mousse and uh, chocolate pretzel crumble. So it was on the dessert menu. And it was actually the inspiration for his winning cake on Best Bakers in America, where he made a chocolate 4th of July firecracker cake on the final challenge. So it was grandma's cake recipe, but he, his, his inspiration was in there as well for some of the other parts. So if you look on his Food Network bio and you can see that it says he likes to give his dishes quirky names and he believes this because he thinks people get menu fatigue when ordering so you're looking at the menu and you're seeing all the same things and you know fancy restaurant creme brulee whatever it's all the same so he likes to give it quirky whimsical names to his desserts and that has carried over into his chocolate making his chocolate bars have super fun names um, that mostly relate to, are or inspired by the flavors in the chocolate himself themselves. Uh, let's see what else do I want to tell you about him. Um, yeah, so I have three bars. I think that's it for now. I'll tell you some more when we flip the camera around. But I have three bars. These three bars here. I have his Pride Bar, which is a. 69% Madagascar base and it's got other stuff in there but I'll show you that. Then I have his Smooth Operator which is a 58% Costa Rica and Umai Umai which is a not so white chocolate with black sesame and Kanako which if you don't know what Kanako is that is a roasted soy powder which tastes like it's kind of like nuttiness. It's kind of like a peanut butter powder almost. And kokuto, which I don't know what that is. So I'll have to look that up. I have always been surprised that more makers don't use kanako. Because that is a flavor bomb. So 
Let's flip the camera around. I'll tell you a little bit about his packaging and how his grandma's influence is there as well. And we'll taste some chocolate together. So let's do it. All right, so here are the three bars that I have from him. Now, when I contacted him about this um, to ask him some questions, he said that he was undergoing a um, revamping of his bar and wrapper. So by the time this shows up on my channel, these may look different. So we have the stash. We know where that partially where that comes from is his um, mustache, obviously, but you can see that here the stash is made up of two cocoa pods, in case you didn't notice. The other thing where the word stash kind of comes from is his Nana used to have candy dishes all over the house, but chocolate was special and very often she had a secret stash and she would say that she'd have to hide it from herself so she wouldn't eat it all. So it also is inspired by secret stash. So it's got two meanings. Um, I'm trying to decide which one I want to open them all, but that would make an excessively long video. So I think maybe I'll open the pride bar because um, it's pretty to look at. So the pride bar was made, inspired by um, pride month. It's a 69% Madagascar dark chocolate bar. We've got made in Hillsborough, Oregon. He's got the batch number on the side. He is a small batch maker. He's very much um, against commercial chocolate practices. When he was getting into, when he was deciding what to do with his career, the next steps, and he discovered that bean to bar chocolate making was possible in a non-industrial way. He very much committed to being against the commercial process of chocolate making. He was inspired by the fact that it was a um, agricultural product and he could make it from scratch, which you only recently have been able to do due to mostly machinery and availability of beans. They used to sell beans by the ton. So if you're small, small match or by huge like containers, if you were a small, small batch maker, you wouldn't be able to um, do that many beans at a time. And also the size of the equipment has been scaled down for craft chocolate makers. So it makes it much more accessible to more people. So here's what it says in the back. Um, this is, he says, we should always take pride in who we are as LGBTQI plus people. 69% honors the 1969 Stonewall riots. Uh, you'll have to look that up and that's a history thing. I'll let you look that up. It's a fruit forward cacao, obviously because it's Madagascar, blended with rhubarb and raspberry and infused with a touch of lavender, finished with a celebration of edible flower petals. I love that. This so sounds like a pastry chef put his, he, this was crafted. This bar was crafted. He thought about the flavors going in. He thought about a history. There's a story. There's a whole story. It's like a dessert that he has crafted, but it's craft chocolate. So amazing. I'm excited to taste this. So we can see that um, it's single orange and cacao, cane sugar, cocoa butter. Then we've got the other ingredients that he mentioned and they are all organic. So it's sustainable. The wrapper is sustainable. It's upcycled, it's recycled, it's compostable. Then let's see what we've got on the inside here. Ooh, flower petals, it's like confetti. <laughs> So it's a nice looking bar. Look at that nice shine, good temper on it so far. And look at the beautiful colors of the flower petals on the back. Again, such a, it looks like such a composed dessert that he's thought about all of this. So let's snap it. See if I can not lose too many flower petals in this. Ooh, that has got a nice sharp crisp snap. 
and it was not just crisp because of the thickness you could hear it and feel it it was a nice crisp snap it looks good there's no larger size particles or anything that are sticking out so what I'm gonna do now is this is a bit tricky because he has other things added in. I know Madagascar has notes of raspberry, notes of citrus that are often forward. So I'll, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub the chocolate with my thumb to warm up the cocoa butter and release some of the volatiles and check the aroma and then we'll give it a taste. Okay, uh, this is a lovely bar to taste. Um, very fruit forward bar. You've got the raspberry and the lemony citrus notes uh, coming in from the Madagascar cacao, but you've also got his addition of raspberry, which makes it um, very fruit forward. I get the lavender in um, not as a tongue taste, but retronasally. So as I breathe in, as I'm tasting, I get just a hint of lavender, which makes it a lovely balance with the rest of the ingredients. Not as some chocolate makers do where it's like eating perfume or soap and it's totally overwhelming. This is just lovely balanced flavor combination, which is what pastry chefs do so well, which is why I usually really like chocolate bars who, that are composed by pastry chefs or crafted by pastry chefs. Just a fun, fun bar to eat. I don't get a lot of flavor from the dried flower petals. Sometimes you'll get, like, what does he have in here? Um, cornflower marigold rose petals. So some of that floral fragrance may come from it. There's a little bit of a herbal note. The marigold can sometimes have a citrusy flavor to it. So that's also in there, but it's, I would never be able to tease which comes from the Madagascar cacao and which comes from the flower petals itself. That would be a really hard task to do. So yeah, love this bar. What a fun bar. What a well thought out dessert on a theme. Perfect. The other one I'm going to open today is this Umai Umai just because I'm super curious to see what this looks like. So this is a white chocolate based bar. So based on a traditional Japanese dessert, kanako is a roasted, roasted soy power, kokuto is Japanese brown sugar, and black sesame combined to give umami nut butter. Oh, this sounds so good. I can't waste to taste it. So cocoa butter is the first ingredient. That's the tip that this is a um, white chocolate based bar, although we're getting the other tip on the front that it's a not so white chocolate bar. So don't expect this to look like your average white chocolate bar. Wow, what a color. Look at that, beautiful. Nice, shiny, looks great, looks in temper. Look at those black sesame inclusions. Let's see, now I don't usually expect a lot of snap on a white chocolate bar, but I have a feeling this one's gonna have a big snap, mostly because it's thickness, but also, yep, there we go. That has a really nice snap. You can see those inclusions in there. Good snap, obviously not as crisp as the dark chocolate bar. That's just the way white chocolate rolls. So what I'm gonna do again is just warm this up release the volatiles and then we'll taste it and come back and tell you what's going on all right umai means good in japanese good good i have to agree wow the flavor in this bar wow okay this is a not your average white chocolate bar this is not a cloyingly sweet white chocolate. This is beautiful flavors in it. Um, you taste it, you get the deep richness of the Japanese brown sugar, but not it's not a sugar forward bar at all. It's sesame and nutty. Those are the flavors that you get. It's like a, it's seriously an umami. <laughs> it's exactly what he described umami nut butter such 
a savory, nutty, sesame blend that are so well balanced, so well balanced. Beautiful bar. Um, Eric, if you don't enter chocolate competitions, you definitely should. These bars are, they would do well. Uh, all right, so delightful. I'm looking for, I'm not gonna open this one today, but I'm definitely looking forward to trying it down the road. And I am going to order me some more stash bars. He always has unique flavors coming out. There's a lot of it changes, some of it stays the same, but every time I go on there, he's got something new on his website. So those are the two bars I'm trying from Stash Chocolate today. Let's flip the camera around and finish up. All right, so that is Stash Chocolate. Yum, so good. I would highly recommend trying some of his chocolate. I right now am in the middle of judging an international chocolate for the International Chocolate Awards. They're America's division and I have a little bit of chocolate fatigue because I am eating like almost 400 samples to judge this competition and so I don't really want to eat a lot of chocolate on the side but I have to say this was very enjoyable it didn't hit any of my fatigue and yeah I will definitely order from stash chocolate again so Eric thank you for sharing your expertise with us I would love someday to try your Nana's chocolate cake recipe and I will continue to try your chocolate so if you have tried stashed chocolate and had one of his unique flavors be sure to let me know uh, down in the comments what do you think about these flavors are they cool or what so if you would like to know more about chocolate makers in your area you can give me a recommendation or just ask me any chocolate question you got on your mind don't forget to subscribe so you get a notification when i release a new video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.